Hi folks. Well, I was requested to tell you guys about like new features of Apache Ignite 2.10. Well, I believe this this session should be more practical and I will show you how it works actually. So, but first of all, let me introduce myself. Uh, so my name is Vladimir. Uh, I work, I operate as a as a part of customer solutions team inside of grid gain systems i am mostly responsible for for their communication between uh, grid gain systems and its customers especially i am involved in the like technical aspects of their communication and also i am an, an apache ignite contributor so uh, let's start well i believe there are four main streams of features that became available in Apache Ignite 2.10. Uh, first, first one is Think Clients. Second one is Cluster Monitoring. The third one is Cluster Profiling. And the last one is Transparent Data Encryption Enhancements. So I'm going to focus on them one by one. And let's start with Think Clients. So, well, I've prepared a demonstration about these features. So let me show you. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, Think Client's async API. But first of all, before like even start even starting a Think Client, we should start our server servers. So I'm going to start two server nodes. Well, uh, I believe it's, it is in progress. So in the meantime, I'm, I can show you like an async code. That's pretty simple. Uh, let me let let me start another one in the meantime. Okay, guys. So that's pretty straightforward. I am creating like a client, a thin client, and I am le I'm trying to leverage uh, put async. Well, basically it's the same as as a regular put, but it. It is returning uh, a completion stage, which is like backed by Ignite Client Future. So you can, like, you can operate with it as you do with like with regular Java class. Uh, so uh, let me show you that this lambda is being called inside of like inside of another pool. So let me run it in debug mode. So I believe in, in the debug mode, we are going to see that, uh, we are going to see a thread. So let's move on. Okay, so guys, well, it happens inside of fork join common pool. It's a common pool like which is being utilized by the GVM itself, by stream API, etc. So it's all async, it's being handled in another thread. So well, I'll let it be. Uh, and I'm going to focus on another important issue. It's thin client transactions. So I'm going, I'm, I've just modified this example a little bit. I'm using like the same cache, a cache. And I'm, I'm just trying to put some random values inside of like, well, to put them into into a cache. 
that's that's simple that's it so but i'm going to do it inside of inside of a transaction well after that a little bit later i'm going to prove that it's an actual transaction so but first of all let's start it well i've killed the previous example so let's run this one so i hope we'll start yes yes we have started receiving like responses we're just putting random values so let's let's let it be for like for for some like amount of time but uh in the parallel i would like to show you uh i'm sorry that i jump that i'm jumping so fast but i want it to be like clear what's happening so i'm going to move to like profile profiling capabilities uh and show you how to leverage them uh okay so i believe guys you can see my terminal now so i'm on i'm on the directory with uh performance statistics tool which like was introduced in apache ignite 2.10 uh you should build it like from from sources in order to use that but well to make it quicker i've I've done it already. So uh, to build it, you can take it from Ignite Extensions repository, and well, that's pretty straightforward. You you would be able to find steps to do that. So well, okay. But first of all, I need to enable like performance uh, statistics. Well, I'll need some gmx enabled tool in order to achieve that so well i'm going to launch jconsole so well where is it oh here we go okay so let's connect to to one of them for example this one so i'm going to enable performance statistics uh okay here it is uh we have three operations here first of all let's check if it's started or not well performance statistics are not started so let's start them okay i hope some new files should appear yes so it's perf perf stat so currently like transaction information is being recorded uh well these files like reside under under work folder of of a node so okay i believe we like waited enough so let's just stop it so stop recording well and check if it started no it's not working uh well now we we are going to <laughs> we are going to make like the most interesting part of it so as i mentioned before i have built a performance statistics tool so well uh, there is a build report script so as far as i remember it accepts like a directory containing perfstat data as an argument so well let's uh okay copy absolute path okay 
So let's do it. I hope it works. It should at least. Voila. It seems that some HTML files appeared. So, okay. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, it seems that we need the browser to open that. Uh, okay. So let's open it in, in Finder. So, okay. See, yeah, there is a, there are some, there are a couple of plots like uh, dis displaying transactions. So, well, first of all, it proves that our thin client uh, was performing transactions, and like the second point is that, well, you can have some fancy, fancy graphs, like out from the box. So yeah, that's operation statistics. You can monitor like SQL queries as well, but we don't have SQL queries currently, so it's kind of empty. So, okay, uh, I believe we can move on. Well, so, well, let me delay Kubernetes discovery because it's like the most complicated one. I'll show you that a little bit later if it's okay. So let's move to cluster monitoring. So we have our like cluster up and running. So uh, first of all, I'd like to show you like a simple command that can show you like all available system properties. So I've downloaded binary distribution of of, of Apache Ignite 2.10, and uh, the only thing I need from he, from there is like is a bin directory because well I need some scripts. Yeah, here it is. So first of all, I'm going to to execute ignite sh system props. It's it's pretty simple. It just shows all of all all properties that are currently available. Uh, well, another useful like functionality of Apache Ignite 2.10 is is enhancements of the control sh scripts. For example, you can query like you can query system views. Well, there is a system view argument for for the control sh script. For example, I'll show you how to query like nodes. So you see, it's it's all being extracted from a system view. So we have two nodes running. Well, both of both of them are are servers, not clients, and well, yeah. Uh, another useful stuff is that you can, like, you can watch your cluster metrics with with the help of control of the control stage script. So, for example, I'm going to query uh, cluster dot total server nodes metric uh, just to confirm that. The previous one were showing everything okay. So yeah, it seems that that's correct. <laughs> so it's two. So two no nodes in topology. Okay, I believe we are now ready to move to the most interesting part. It's Kubernetes discovery. So I'll get back a little bit. So it's Kubernetes discovery for thin clients. Uh, let me stop my like local clusters in order to 
prevent them from inter interfering. Uh, it seems everything is stopped. Okay, because I'm going to to deploy Apache Ignite into my local Kubernetes installation. So, and the most interesting part that I'm going to leverage uh, our new Ignite operator for Kubernetes. And well, first of all, I I deployed uh operator itself well to make it faster i've already done that so unfortunately you won't be able to see that but uh i'll show you that it's deployed currently so well uh i'll get deployments for the apache ignite operator namespace well and it seems that there is there is a deployment, so it's up and running. Yeah, you see, I uh, I did it about like 30 hours ago. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is to to deploy Apache Ignite custom resources. But first of all, I'll show you. Well, I'll, I'll show you, show you like layout so i need to well i'm going to show you ignite yaml it's the custom resources dedicated for for pods so currently you have zero pods well i'd like to have two pods why not so uh, okay and i've made one one adjustment that I I specified like an image. Currently, it's Apache Ignite slash Apache Ignite slash Ignite 2.10. So it's going to use the latest one. Okay. So fingers crossed. Let's try to deploy this one. Well, it could it can take a while, but to make it faster, I well, I've pulled the image in advance. So, oops, it seems that no, I'm sorry, this one. Let's ignite YAML, and we need to deploy. Uh, configuration resource as well. So ignite config is is a file that that contains uh, like ignite configuration. So let's have a look what's happening there. I believe we should have a couple of pods. So well, it seems that it's still in progress. Yeah, as I mentioned before, it it could take a while. So let's switch to to a sync client itself in the meantime. So okay guys, let I have a Kubernetes sync client class here. So um, well it's it's pretty similar to the previous classes I I was showing you, but uh anyway it's it's a little bit different from that from them because i have a client address finder that's being like tuned with uh, kubernetes connection configuration and there are two two arguments not namespace and service name so uh i'm going to deploy this one into my local kubernetes environment uh well, basically, it's it's going to do the same as as the previous clients. So, well, Kubernetes cache one. I want it to be cache one. So, guys, uh, I I prepared a Docker file. Well, so it's it's really minimalistic. It's just like takes like 
uh, jar files being built by by my Spring Boot plugin. So let's build it. I believe clean package. So I hope it won't explode because local Kubernetes environment is pretty heavy. My laptop's fans are heating really hard, <laughs> but I believe it's more about like Docker desktop specifics. So, okay, it seems that we have like a jar here. So let's build, let's involve Docker into this game. So, well, I want it to be Docker build, sorry, Docker build. I want Vladimir slash test tag dot. So, well, open GDK Alpine is it's pretty lightweight, so it should be fast. Exporting layers. Okay, I believe like it has been built. So let me show you Kubernetes deployment. So it's it's pretty reduced as well. So I'm going to have only one replica for the client. And well, and as far as we can see, there is a Vladimir slash test here. So uh, we are going to use my freshly built image. And I'm going to set image policy as never because I don't want to push it to any rep repository. So it's all going to be local. Okay, guys, it seems that we need to cross our fingers again because oh first of all let's have a look at at our okay container and creating well it seems that something is happening well it would be nice to have a look at at the logs so why not well So, okay, let me copy that. So, as far as I remember, it should be kubectl logs. Well, and not to forget a namespace Apache Ignite. Okay, it seems that it's up and running. It's like it has two servers. Okay looks good enough so let's proceed with our client deployment so okay so oh, let's go kubectl apply deployment apache ignite I'll deploy it to the exactly like to the, to the same space to the same namespace as I did like for for the cluster itself. So let's go. Okay. Oh, I believe we have a terminal here. We can watch pods here. Why not? So, okay, there are three pods. So let's check what's what's happening inside of, of the client. So, okay, it should be kubectl logs and Apache ignite. Okay, it's up and running. So that's it, guys. We have deployed our client, 
our client with with the Kubernetes discovery inside of our cluster. It seems to be it seems to be good and running. So, well, let's move on. Well, guys, I'm going to turn my Kubernetes off to prevent it from like from interfering into our next demo stage. Okay, so let's let's leave it as is. So okay, so the next one is uh, transparent data encryption. So uh, from starting from Apache Ignite 2.10, it became much much easier to build your like your systems that that have to be PCI DSS enabled because now it's possible to rotate master key. So it so it wasn't possible before. So let me show you how to to operate these facilities. So I I have prepared like another one. So okay, let's disable it. So what's what's important here? Uh, there is a key store encryption SPI which declares all the key store like related options for the transparent data encryption stuff. So let's keep in mind one thing that I'm going to set my master key as Vladimir one. So, oh, technically, I should. I'm going to show you because uh, it's one. So, uh, I I needed to do that because uh, I want you guys to to see that if you specify different keys for your nodes, it won't be it won't be possible for them to start. So let me change, like. So let's make it two. I have two. I have two keys, or maybe three keys, inside my key store. So let me show you. Uh, I'm using key tool. So okay, it's it's list command. So currently, I have three keys inside my three secret keys inside my inside of my my key store. So. Well, let's generate another one. Well, just to show you how to do that. So I have a command prepared for for that. So the new one is going to be called Vladimir 4. Okay, so we generated IS secret key. So as far as I can see, the list command now shows us that there are four keys inside of the key store, so it's all good. Uh, okay, let's get back to our like to our ignite stuff. So I'm going to change an argument. Oh, I've already done that. So um, let's start the first one first. So to be absolutely safe, I'm going to clean my my work directory. So because we have like another cluster running there. So okay, let's have a look. Again, fingers crossed. Okay. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Okay, note started. So uh, I believe it managed to open the key store. By the way, I've already specified a cache. I called it encrypted cache, and it ha it has encryption enabled set as true. And another important thing is that it should be it should reside should reside in in some persistent region so well i have called it encrypted so 
as far well you you can see that it has persistent enabled set as true uh okay so what i want to show you first of all i want to show you that if we start another one with with another master key name it, it's going to fail so Yeah, so master key digest differs, not join is rejected. So it's a different key, in fact. So let's let's make it the same because I want two nodes to participate in this demo. Okay, I hope now it's going to join. Well. Let's wait a little bit for a little bit. So that seems to be fine. Well, so let's move directly to the topic. So as I as I told you guys, there is a way to to involve some master key rotation, but first of all, let's show current master key so there is a get master key name command for the control sage script so it's vladimir one i'll highlight that uh, so i'm going to change it oh by the way i believe just a sec. Yeah, here it is. So it's Vladimir two. Oh, it's it's failed. Uh, master key was rejected. That's because our cluster wasn't active. So let's activate it. Okay, I have I have a client, another client prepared for that. So encrypted thing client. So. As you can see, it's also pretty minimalistic and simple, and it's just like putting some values and activating our cluster. So let's give it a shot. I hope it's going to work. Okay, okay, yeah, it works. It means that our cluster has been activated. So well, most likely we will be able to to change master key currently. So looks good. The master key changed. So let's check current master key. Yeah, it's Vladimir too. Well, we don't have much data there, but if we had, so in that case, it would be like uh, re-encrypting in, in background mode. So it's also worth like mentioning that you can leverage uh, Java, Java API for, for, for rotating and well, and it also can tune your like, your background speed of of actual re-encryption because if we combine like unlimited speed of re-encryption with some like checkpointing it could be it could become a disaster to be honest so it seems that it's all prepared for like for a more sophisticated installations uh, related to some like security especially it was it was actually designed for for the PCI DSS compliance. So it seems that that's it. Well, thanks for your attention and patience. And well, 
I would be glad to receive some questions from you guys. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, we have a couple of questions. I mean, I guess one question from Marius. He is asking for 2.10, how is the status of integration with Spring? Well, technically, Apache Ignite uses Spring as it's like somehow as as a configuration framework. Uh, well, I'm not like particularly understand what do you mean by integration? It's like it's integrated. So uh, yeah, so I guess it's yeah. Has anything changed uh, with the Spring well, integration? Technically, no, 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 definitely not. So. I believe okay. it's going to change in the Ignite 3, but I don't think that anything is going to change like uh, in the Ignite 2. Great. Thanks, Vladimir. Um, the next question from Lee is, um, is continuous query for uh, Java 10 client available in Ignite? 2.10? Well, uh, unfortunately not, because uh, our thin client protocol was enhanced and improved to support continuous queries, but unfortunately, continuous queries for, for Java client like didn't make it. So they are to appear in Ignite 2.11. But you have continuous queries for for the .NET client in the Apache Ignite 2.10. All right, that's all I had. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Vladimir.